Hello YouTube, my name is your old TV support, Call of Duty World War 2, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to talk to you guys about Sledgehammer Games and the inherent problem that comes with Call of Duty's three year development cycle. The most recent big update to this game of course was this past Tuesday and no doubt you guys have noticed that a lot of things in that update have not been working properly. The change to the resistance division in my opinion is awesome, but the toggle feature randomly disappears in matches, Major Howard's orders have been bugged for the past couple of days and they're very difficult to accept, the new epic supply drop special order has been here for three straight days and according to people who have been afk farming prop hunt to complete the orders the bribes can not only give you duplicates but they sometimes don't even guarantee you an epic item so basically it's a worthless supply drop and according to reports it appears that the black scope bug is still occasionally happening while playing the war game mode it's no secret that sledgehammer games has been struggling mightily with updates here in call of Duty war 2 i'll give them all the credit in the world they have been updating their game much more frequently than we're used to and they've had a lot more transparency and their communications actually been pretty top-notch but the actual implementation of the patches has been rough to say the least it took them 26 days to get the headquarters populated three months to get the flat guns event working two months to add the emblem gallery to the game and for some reason they decided to release it with no search feature of any kind so basically this thing is just a social score farm for the 50 people who are lucky enough to upload first and they've even done weapon balance updates where for some reason certain variants of those weapons did not take on the new changes. The list goes on and on, and with this recent patch, it's becoming more and more clear to me that the Call of Duty 3-year development cycle is definitely having a negative effect on Call of Duty games as a whole. Instead of developers releasing a game and focusing all of their attention on maintaining and updating it post-launch, they instead immediately begin work on their next game. This is why I think we saw so many post-launch weapons and maps back in the beta game files. It's because they make most of that stuff before the game comes out, so they don't have to do it while working on their next game. I think this also explains why the post-launch support of various Call of Duty games has been on the decline over the past couple of years. In Modern Warfare Remastered, it took Raven Software about four or five months, give or take, to update the game's spawns, its server tick rate, and the collateral damage bug, and we now know that the entire time, they were actually working with Sledgehammer Games to co-develop the war game mode here for Call of Duty World War II, so it makes sense, right? It's hard to update and maintain your current game if you're so focused on the next game, and the worst thing about the entire situation is both games end up suffering, right? The current game suffers because developers are so preoccupied with their next game that the current one doesn't receive as many updates as it should, and when it is updated, sometimes things are completely broken, like what we saw this past Tuesday, and the new game also suffers because the team is still paying attention to the previous one. They are still allocating time and resources to updating it, maintaining it, and creating new content for it, so both games in the long run suffer because of this three-year development cycle. To Activision's credit, this actually has gotten a little bit better since they started doing this three-year system, right? So before, when it was just Infinity Ward and Treyarch, we would have to wait months for big updates to come through, and to this day, some broken features are still around in the older games, right? We have the Modern Warfare 2 noob tubes, we have the Call of Duty 4 outside the map glitches, we have the Black Ops gunship kill streak, which to this day still does not work in Ground War. If you call it in, it basically just flies around into a wall and takes you outside the map, it's completely broken. The World at War MP40, for some ungodly reason, has 59 damage per bullet on console. I remember back in Modern Warfare 3, this is my favorite example of a terrible update, Infinity Ward said they wanted to nerf the FMG9 machine pistols, and instead they accidentally buffed them like crazy, making them even better than before. So, Call of Duty's post-launch support has never been perfect. I don't think it ever will be perfect, because everybody has a different idea of what perfect is, right? I can make a 20-minute video talking about all things I would change about Call of Duty World War 2, and I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree with some of it, but you'd also disagree with a lot of it as well, because we all have different opinions, but one thing I think we can all agree on is when a patch is added to a game, that patch should actually fix the things it's claiming to fix and change the things that's claiming to change. It's gotten to the point now in the Call of Duty series where when a developer adds an update to the game, we can't take their word for it. We can't take the patch notes seriously. We have to go and individually test everything for ourselves to make sure they're actually telling us the truth, right? It seems like every single patch is followed by a slightly smaller patch or a series of hotfixes that address all the issues that the new patch created in the first place. So bottom line, 
the developers need to do a better job of updating the games that they released. We've arrived at a point in Call of Duty history where new games are super buggy at launch and don't come with all the features that are promised, and the updates that are supposed to fix these issues, they're either late or they are poorly implemented because the developers are so preoccupied with creating their next game. This is the problem that the three-year development cycle causes, right? Each studio is given a set amount of time to make their game, and they are given a set in stone release date. They are to release their game on that date, no exceptions, regardless of whether or not the game is actually ready. These days, you see studios like Rockstar delaying the release of Red Dead 2 because they want to make sure the game is perfect at launch, whereas studios like Treyarch, Infinity Ward, and Sledgehammer, they don't have that luxury. I really do think if Sledgehammer were given three more months to perfect their game, I have no doubt that the headquarters and events would have worked perfectly at launch. I don't think we would have had the issues that we had with experience and challenges not working properly or ranked play being completely bugged. I think the game would have been much better if Sledgehammer had a little bit more time, but unfortunately, they didn't have that time, and this is why, as I said, going full circle here, they begin work on their new games so early, which is what causes their newer games to suffer when it comes to post-launch updates. If Activision wants to continue with this three-year development cycle, I really do think they need to raise the bar of quality control when it comes to the launch of their new games and the support of those games in the months that follow. I don't know if that means hiring more people, bringing in help from other studios like Phoenix or Raven Software, or just delaying patches slightly until they are 100% tested and perfected. Something needs to happen, right? Because as a consumer, it's really disheartening to see my favorite game franchise struggle with the same issues year after year after year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much all I have for you guys here in this video. I've been thinking about this a lot over the past couple of days, and I thought I would sit down, just rant about this, give my thoughts and feelings on the current state of development here in the Call of Duty franchise. And of course, I'd love to hear what you guys think down there in the comment section below. What can Activision and the three studios do to improve their game development and their update cycles? What do you think about them potentially delaying games if they aren't ready, possibly taking a year off so each studio has more time to perfect their next game? Or perhaps, and I've talked about this in the past, but I really like this idea, what if they were to release a massive Call of Duty game that is worked on by all three developers and is updated for years on end, like what Rockstar is doing with GTA 5? I'd love to hear all your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section below. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Drop me a rating, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.